G'day legends, so last night at Dana White's Contender Series, Dana was asked about something that the UFC hasn't done since the opening of the flyweight division, and that was to have a four-man tournament to decide the winner of the BMF belt, the tournament to be held between Max Holloway, Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, and Dan Hooker. This gets my MMA juices flowing. So, unless you didn't see it, let's have a look at Dana White's reaction when the idea was floated to him. It only takes a second. Dana actually gave a pretty short answer. Listen to it now. Poirier proposed a four-man tournament for the BMF title. Him, Gaethje, Max, and Dan Hooker. Is that something you'd ever consider? I mean, it's BMF, so you can do make up your own rules. Sounds fun. Never thought about it, but yeah, I love it. Now, this idea of a four-man BMF tournament sounds perfect for just a whole number of reasons and pretty horrible for one, okay? So there's a couple of things to get into this, plus that could actually stop it from happening or allow it to happen. There's a couple of points here that I wanna cover and like a good six pack of beers, let's start getting through them one by one. Point number A is that this contest of the tournament would essentially all be a bunch of rematches except for Dan Hooker versus Justin Gaethje. So I guess for the sake of some fresh matchups and a bit of parody, I would start off with Dan Hooker versus Justin Gaethje and then have Max Holloway versus Dustin Poirier in a epic rematch fight. And obviously the two winners would go ahead and fight each other. Having said that, I do think that it would be Max Holloway versus Justin Gaethje rematching for the BMF belt with Max Holloway eventually winning it. And why is that? Well, because the first fight between Dustin Poirier and Max Holloway was a lot closer than people tend to remember. You know, people forget, man. And that was a while ago. Like now Max is actually entering the peak of his fighting age. Where obviously Dustin Poirier, he's starting to age out a little bit. And I think Max Holloway's improvements over the last couple of years are gonna be enough to outweigh all the wars and the damage and the age that Dustin Poirier is gonna be carrying into his rematch with Max in this hypothetical tournament. So I do think Max would be able to get that win. Dan Hooker versus Justin Gaethje, it would be tough. It would be exciting, but Dan Hooker, he does get a little bit reckless and deep into fights when the pressure is turned up. And Gaethje knows how to stay calm and composed and just keep chipping away with the fundamentals eventually to get his own win. You would then end up with a epic rematch of the UFC 300 bout Max Holloway versus Justin Gaethje. And I do think Max Holloway would end up getting the win purely because I just think Max Holloway's body is the kind of body that can carry the damage and it's perfect for a tournament style matchup. But that does lead us to point number B, a tournament style matchup. I love everyone involved in this tournament, except for Max Holloway. I think that this tournament would only really be viable should Max Holloway, and when I say should Max Holloway, I mean when Max Holloway does eventually lose to Ilya Tepudio at UFC 308. On the wild chance that Max Holloway actually wins against Ilya Tepudio, not only would that you know, crown him as one of the goats of the sport. And don't worry, members of the live chat, we will talk about the, the top 50 MMA fighters of all time. I have some thoughts about that argument that we had last night. I'll get into that. But if Max wins, obviously a tournament for the BMF belt in another division is not exactly uh, appropriate for the lineage and for the current featherweight belt holder. Okay, so that doesn't work out very well if Max Holloway actually beats Ilya Tapuria. But if Max Holloway actually loses, then I think it would be absolutely perfect to have this tournament because Max Holloway would sort of be a man without a division. He'd be floating around, which leads me into point number C. A tournament in America uh, is unfortunately not very fun to think about, right? The Western Athletic Commissions have become far too weak as everyone across the West has, which would require medical checks after each tournament bout and before the next tournament bout. And when you consider how much damage that these particular fighters go through, how much they love war, a actual tournament between these four competitors, probably the chances of that finishing is like, I would say close to zero without a medical being pulled and the fighter not being able to continue to the next bracket. However, in 2024 and obviously going into 2025, the UFC have reminded everybody that they're actually a global company and there is no need to do a tournament here in the West. Instead, much like many Westerners around the world, they could move to the East where fun is still allowed and hold the tournament. And I know, and I know you're gonna hate this one. You get, you're going to hate this idea, but hold a tournament in a place that would actually allow a little bit more brutality, like Abu Dhabi. The Abu Dhabi pays the UFC a flat fee per pay-per-view. 
So you could easily cover the costs of everyone on that show. You're talking about some big names in that tournament. They all have a hefty price tag. It would be an expensive show for the UFC, but because Abu Dhabi would pay for it, that would absolutely look after it. You could also do it in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Again, where the commission is pretty much just Turk Shay. It could do whatever you want. These regions, of course, have these commissions that are controlled by the Teak Sheikh, Turk Shay. Uh, sorry, I don't know how to say it. Or uh, the Abu Dhabi Commission. The Abu Dhabi Commission is essentially just an arm of the UFC. The UFC helps set up the commission, helps regulate the commission, gives advice to the commission. Obviously, the Abu Dhabi Commission is a completely third party and has got nothing to do with the UFC, much like the UFC's new drug testing association. But either way, that's extremely important and relevant when it comes to a one night tournament for these four athletes, right? These are some of the most brutal guys in the sport. There's gonna be lots of cuts and abrasions going into the second bracket, okay? So that leads me into point number D. Should the UFC do this, and they absolutely should do this, it should be in late 2025 if a couple of things happen. When, when Max Holloway loses to Alex Pereira, then they should do it towards the end because then you would have Dan Hooker, Justin Gaethje, and, Justin, and Dustin Poirier, and uh, maybe Max Holloway, but Max Holloway's still got a couple more years in, but at least those three, all towards the end of their runs. And they need big fights themselves, and the fans would absolutely love it, right? The UFC is a little bit flat for super fights in 2024, and these guys are the big names, right? Instead of having super events in 2024, we, instead of having super fights in 2024, sorry, we had super events, right? UFC 300 was a super event. UFC Sphere was a super event. But our big fights were sort of a little bit flat this year. And in going into 2025, we the best that we might get would be Alex Pereira versus Tom Aspinall. We could get that early in the year, you know, in the first two quarters of the year, once John Jones and Steve Amiocic finish their retirement bouts and just piss off. Then you could have the BMF tournament later in the year in Abu Dhabi, in Saudi Arabia, somewhere around September, October. By that time, right, a couple of things would have played out. And I suggest beef beefing up this tournament just a little bit. Look, fans, fans of the community. Renato Moicano is 35 going on 36 years old. He's become a fan favorite, but unfortunately, it's, it's his age is the problem here. Plus, he's got a blown out collarbone. I, I really do not see Moicano going much further than where he is now. Maybe one more win. But we love Moicano and he wants a check and he needs money. So I would say chuck him into this legacy event tournament against while we're sacrificing absolute goats who are starting to age out and they were both from the featherweight division and they've both competed at lightweight. Chuck in Alexander Volkanovsky as well. Alexander Volkanovsky versus Moicano turn it into a six-man bracket over the course of an entire night, UFC Abu Dhabi or UFC Saudi Arabia. I know that the location sucks for fans. It absolutely sucks for me. It's a way easier time zone for me watching the fights held in Las Vegas, New York, or in Australia, right? Then held in that part of the world. That part of the world is an absolute pain in the ass for me because the events start at 2 a.m. in the morning. But I would rather have a six-man brutal tournament for the BMF belt put together with a commission that would actually allow violence to flow rather than in the US. Like, God help us if this idea was actually to happen in the New York State Athletic Commission, right? They bloody stopped Nate Diaz in the BMF fight just because he has a little cut over his eyebrow. It's Nate Diaz, mate. But that is where my mind started to go the second that this bracket got brought up. It could happen. It could actually very well happen late in 2025. There are a couple of things that hold it back, like Max Holloway winning. But I think it is a great idea that the UFC should 100% do. It's the sort of gimmick that the UFC needs at least once per year. You've got these names of these legends in the sport that are going to fade out very, very soon within the next year or two. So might as well just set them up in flames in this beautiful tournament that we are always going to remember. No one's going to forget that night. <clears throat> so that's it with my idea about the brackets and the tournaments. The last thing that I wanted to cover in this video is last night we got into a very heated debate about my top 50 MMA fighters of all time. So I went back and I lay in bed and I pulled it up and I stared at it. And, I, and while I was staring at it, I realized I'm an idiot. <laughs> I was instantly seeing 
glaring mistakes all over that list. So I'm gonna go back and work on it. I know at the end of the uh, live stream, I said I would unveil it later this week, maybe during the fight night live stream when there's a few dead events going on, a few dead fights, I might bring it back up. But I, don't, I really started to like shuffle things around and move about it. And I was like, this is gonna take me a lot longer than I think it is. So I might work on it for a little bit, but I will 100% keep you guys updated, but that's it. If this is your first time here, I try and make an MMA video every single day. I try and go live three times a week where we have raging mass debates together, me and the chat. That sounded a bit John Jones, a bit zesty, didn't it? If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. If you don't enjoy the content later on, that unsubscribe button is always there. You can click off. And if you're already part of the channel, just hit that like button. It helps grow the channel, helps me dedicate more time to it. Until then, you guys have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all in the next video.